thanks King for coming out. So here's my story on like Pleasant. Uh, years ago when the striper show started showing up, the only ways that I really knew how to catch them was like visually, right? So they were either up shallow or most, more than anything boiling. And like fish that were boiling were kind of the only fish that I would catch out here. And it was always fun and exciting, but it's always like these weird windows. Uh, one day they do it, the next day they don't. So what I, one time, after one of my saltwater trips, <laughs> I came back here and I started kind of thinking more along the what we were doing with the butterfly jigs in the saltwater for yellowtails, skipjack, uh, groupers, all these kind of rockfish. Um, what I had learned from them was this more vertical way of fishing with the graphs, with the electronics, and now using like the sonar. So like with the largies that we always did, I was always using more the down imaging, the side imaging, really to find the kind of structure or you know features that I wanted to fish, and then using the mapping to move the boat over to see where, you know, how to accurately place a cast into those situations. But here, now I'm looking at the sonar. Like I want to find fish on the graph first. And what I've found about these stripers they really like to follow certain depths. So there'll be times when they're so like dialed in, it's 32 feet. If I can find those good zones of 32 feet, boom, there's fish there. Once I start drifting off either side of that, then all of a sudden you stop seeing the fish on the graph, stop getting bit. So one really neat feature about like the hummingbirds and their mapping system is that I can set these highlights to be right on those areas that I'm looking for. So that 30, 40 zone, I can highlight the whole thing. And now I know exactly where and how, like what has the good features down there. The stripers, I don't think they, I feel like the largies micromanage an area and kind of look at the best, you know, the best structure on it and how to set up on there to do short bursts of energy to, to get food. I feel like the stripers look at these coves and, and all this lake like much macro manage it, like a much bigger scale in that certain zone, 30, 40, 60, 80 sometimes, sometimes they're even shallower, 25. But I want to find this zone and just cruise around there. So right now we're still in 40 coming into it. So we're checking like a little deeper because sometimes, like I said, they go 45, 50, whatever. We want to find that like sweet spot zone where we're going to see them on the graph. Um, we'll probably also see bait and then we'll find those thick lines. And it's like sometimes when you're new to the grass, it, you want to almost like, what is fish? Like, is that little thing a fish? One thing that this has taught me is really how to size these fish, these marks on these graphs. So even a you know even a regular size striper out here which is nowadays a great size uh, even those will like show a certain depth but then you start seeing you know real big crayon marks what we're looking for even more than that is the uh the look of when they're really feeding on there we're calling it mom spaghetti <laughs> you'll see those lines and they all they're they're like in formation sweep them up and down i imagine they're coming down to the bottom kicking up what they can there's other fish behind them that are you know it's like they all participate in that It'd be probably really nice to dive down and see that happen but uh what we're looking for is that on the graph so they they're we're going to be in a spot we got the speed up of the graph pretty high and we can actually watch those fish swim under you can see your spoon down there and what's really neat is you can see like not only that but you can see them follow it you see like when they're denying it or sometimes you see like when they're biting it. Just the other day we had a, a trip out here and it was like, oh, you, you got one on your spoon. Like keep, keep, you know, keep working it, keep working it. And then boom, he got bit. And then I got to see it even get uh, like the fish fighting up with his bait underneath the graph. But we're using these big spoons and uh, they're flutter spoons. And it's almost like a, it's almost like a hard bumper of a Senko. <laughs> they flutter down and all we're really doing, it's not, you know, I like to be a little more violent with them, but people outfish me all the time by just lifting them up slow off the bottom. You let it go all the way to the bottom, lift it up, and you guide it back down. Lift it up, guide it back down, and the spoon is, uh, sometimes it's, there's like two things that it does. Sometimes it flutters really hard. It flutters really hard, and it just doo -doo 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 goes pretty straight, I think. The other thing that it does is as this hook goes back and it starts firing downward in a more, you know, in a more like searching kind of method, not downward, but like a searching method. You can kind of see how they're, they all have their shapes, but they all kind of behave the same. I've also been adding this little uh, neat spinner out the back of it. And uh, it looks, you know, when it's going down, it looks like this is the head part and this is like a little tail flapping. 
and sometimes we add stingers on there I've been tying some stingers but with this one I feel like they really target that big part really easily got treble hooks that we've been I've been making too been testing out different ideas on the stinger versions for that because these things fight really hard <laughs> and the neat thing about stripers is you never know what size you're gonna run into like just as easily as you're catching the average size which you could call three to five pounds or around that nowadays you can also end up running into something really big and we've had those on the trips and they've they've beat us up every time <laughs> they fight real hard uh, they pull like a, they do like almost a good two runs where you have to let them you have to let them go like either you get adjust that drag or just go you know move around with the fish um, you gotta let them like you gotta let them run a little we've lost quite a few that pull hooks or even break hardware from uh, from fighting them a little rough <laughs> Solid ring that's impossible to find. And I'll take one of these. Stinger style on a solid ring. On to these like 125 or 150 pounds spring rings out here. Solid to treble. Yeah. Can't get him, bro. Got him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, can't get him. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Hit it so hard, dude. Hit <laughs> it so hard. Isn't it the oh, shit? <laughs> Let him run. He's gonna try to run on me. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Go. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, so that's how it's done, huh? Like that, like that. Just like, like that. that. <laughs> Spoon in them, baby. <laughs> Look at that. Ceviche grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you just made one, right? So you just yeah, kind of so put right this here, one together. Yeah, put one together. And uh, so when I roll out here, I have my spoons are all all here together, but taken apart. So I don't have, I'm not like not messing up hooks by having them dangling and messing, you know, touching the other metal. I have my stingers that I've tied in this little Bass Mafia box, spling of rings. Put that split ring up here, playing with the different lengths. Sometimes I think they're better short, sometimes long. Maybe they get wrapped up in the line and do another one down here. That's it, right? That easy. For you. As you possibly can. But it's got to be worked right. When did it? When did that one hit it? Bro, like lifted it up, and it was falling, and then it came up with it. And I'm like, <laughs> that was insane, dude. That was stupid. That you. dude, you're a picky. Picky. Ooh. Yeah, it's solid. Look at the shoulders on that. Damn. How do we 
we get a nice picture of you. Get one from there. Boom, so that was the Lake Pleasant Striper trip. Super fun morning with the king. Got into him, bought him stuff. These trips, we're half running half days right now. They're 350 for one or two people, 350 for two. Um, after that, it's $100 per person. And as you've seen, you can fish a few people in this type of uh, fishing. So come on out sometime. Enjoy a nice hot morning until August. And uh, let's get them. <laughs> and you can find me to book a trip through email mannychi at gmail.com. M-A-N-N-Y-C-H-E-E -E at gmail.com or my Instagram, also Manny Chi. DM!